You know, a very startling detail of this story and others like it is that the perpetrator preyed on members of his own family and close friends. Well, it happens to be a common practice among sexual predators. 90% of childhood sexual abuse victims know and trust their perpetrator. ABC 4's Sarah Martin continues our team coverage. She joins us now in the studio to help parents know how to spot and stop grooming. Sarah. We never want to believe that the people we know and love are hurting our little ones. Advocates say the only way, though, to effectively protect our kids is to know the signs and communicate with our children. Grooming is the preparation cycle that a predator uses to begin sexually abusing a child and not get caught. Phase one is selection. Perpetrators select kids based on a variety of preferences. Sometimes it's easy access to them. Sometimes are the kids lonely? Um, do they need a friend? Phase two, engagement. This is one where parents can be very vigilant because perpetrators are actually building trust with the child and with the parent. An adult wanting to spend excessive time alone with your child should raise a red flag. Especially if your child starts bringing home gifts because often perpetrators will buy silence. Phase three, grooming. This is where a perpetrator tests boundaries. So there might be a back rub or there might be um, a, an encouragement to break a rule. Teaching your children how and when to say no is the best preparation for this phase. Even if it's someone you know, if they are doing something to you that makes you feel uncomfortable, you want to say, stop. I don't like that. Get away, run away. Phase four, the assault, and then phase five, concealment. They're threatened, they're coerced, they're offered gifts, and they may feel it's their fault. Research tells us that children rarely lie about being sexually abused, but they also may not be able to tell an adult explicitly. Something like, um, my babysitter's bothering me. Um, my neighbor wears funny underwear. and. Parents might just ignore that. Ask open-ended follow-up questions and get help when you need it. Prevent Child Abuse Utah has great trainings for parents on grooming and much more. They're totally free. You can find those links on our website, abc4.com. Now, Sarah, you mentioned these open-ended questions. That can be kind of tricky, especially when the kids and the family may know this person pretty well. Absolutely. So Prevent Child Abuse Utah, excuse me, gave one great tip. They said that the most important question to ask in these conversations is, can you tell me more about that? Can you tell me more about why you don't want to go to the family dinner? Can you tell me more about why your babysitter is bothering you and trusting your child when they tell you something you may not want to hear? Thank you so much. Very good tips because you come in this situation, you think there's no way that can be true. And you probably, you know, push that off even though you may be headed in the right direction. Absolutely. It can never happen to me, but unfortunately right. it happens. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you.